KMR, Kyle Mohan Racing. Going to talk a little bit about bridge porting. Got a tip for all the people out there doing their own porting work. And if you do a lot of porting work, you probably already know this. But I figured if it's your first time doing a bridge port or if you're trying to improve your bridge porting techniques, I think this is going to be helpful. So obviously when you're doing port work, you're working on your overall port shape. Um, intake opening timing and duration are a lot like cam timing. We've talked about that in some of the other porting videos. And with bridge porting, um, especially with naturally aspirated motors, you really want to get a nice ramp in. And that way you're helping the air as it's flowing through the port get scooped up and in as early as possible. Now with a turbo motor, you can just go straight down through. And sometimes I do that. The efficiency is a little bit different because... With boost, you're just really ramming it in there, but with naturally aspirated, way more important. Um, but either way, a lot of the times, even with the boosted motors, when we're trying to optimize or maximize horsepower, um, squeezing a little bit more opening volume by narrowing up the bridge or giving it a proper angle in can help maximize volume and efficiency. Now, a lot of the times I see some pretty rough ports coming in. Obviously, this port is still in the works. It's in progress. And I figured I'd talk a little bit about the tools I use. Um, in regards to shaping the port, it's usually carbide burrs. Um, this one's a little bit small for getting down into some of those tighter radiuses so you can get the casting marks. And I will use some bigger ones that are on a bigger ball radius. And then obviously getting into the bridge port, I sell these little uh, eighth inch uh, carbide end mill bits. And that way you can get them in there and grind internally inside that bridge. Um, not really good for mo removing a lot of material in big areas, but when you get into these tight spaces, either on RX-8 exhaust ports or in bridge ports, you want to have enough working space that you can actually move back and forth, do some cross hatching and uh, try to smooth it out. But sometimes it's still coming out rough. Sometimes uh, you have some imperfections. Maybe you're still working on your technique, so you're not getting that smooth finish you're looking for. Um, this is something that I learned from another great rotary engine builder and a gr great rotary engine Porter, um, use files, diamond files, particularly diamond files. They'll actually cut the cast iron pretty quick and you can come in here and basically I'm doing it left-handed, one-handed, but you can basically work back and forth, old school, work both, work all your directions, cross hatch, cross hatch removes the lumps, removes the bumps, smooths it out. You can even see my bad left-hand file job. I'm, I'm pulling some, some cast iron away and smoothing out that port. Now I don't want to see rough bridge ports coming in for lapping or coming in for service. Um, you know, if you've got the money for some porting tools or some Dremels, then go out there and get yourself a diamond file set. If it's something I need to list in the KMR store, let me know. Um, you know, we could probably do that. Maybe I should come up with like a whole porting kit versus just some porting parts. But uh, there you go. That's kind of the rotary tip of the day or tip of the week if you're doing bridge ports or any type of porting work um, obviously your carbide bits your sandpaper rolls your flappers all very important but don't be afraid to go old school a little diamond file will do you good it's already looking better and i was given it the old left hand all right so that's a wrap it was just a little bit of a porting knowledge that was passed to me and i'm passing it on down We'll, we'll catch everybody soon. We got more to talk about. I got, I got things to port. Go check out the KMR store. Buy some swag. Get some porting templates. Thanks for watching.